Air travel is a big part of our lives and we cannot make it to work without it, but it's also a major source of carbon dioxide emissions. According to reports, air travel contributes to about 12% of all transportation emissions. This is a serious problem because it adds to climate change concerns. To address this issue, the aviation industry needs to make significant changes, but it won't happen overnight and it won't be easy. We're running out of time as climate change is happening quickly. We need a major shift in aviation and there is a glimmer of hope. The microwave plasma fighter jet is an incredible innovation that could help reduce the carbon footprint of aviation and make air travel more environmentally friendly. Join us as we are going into the details of this exciting development that has the potential to save the environment and make air travel eco-friendly. Let's get in. There's a fascinating innovation happening in China. A group of brilliant researchers, led by Professor Zhao Teng, is working on a groundbreaking idea. Their aim is to free airplanes from their reliance on fossil fuels by using a mysterious ingredient that we all know as plasma. Plasma might not be a household word, but it's one of the four basic states of matter. It's everywhere in the universe, formed after the Big Bang, and we can create it artificially using things like microwaves or lasers. These Chinese researchers have a cool plan. They want to use plasma to power planes, not just in space, but right here on Earth. They found a way to generate thrust without traditional jet engines. It's like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it's real. They're using microwaves to compress and ionize air, and with that, they can create propulsion using only electricity and air. So, it means no more fossil fuels. Plasma isn't just for aviation. It's used in various applications, ranging from growing crystals to powering TV screens. But when it comes to aviation, plasma is a game changer. Conventional jet engines can't work effectively above 30 kilometers in the sky, but plasma engines can. This opens up new possibilities, like taking passengers to the edge of the Earth's atmosphere and beyond. Now, let's clear up a common misconception. Plasma engines are different from ion thrusters. Ion thrusters use gases like xenon to propel spacecraft, while plasma thrusters use air or other gases. This flexibility makes plasma thrusters more versatile. Also, the way they ionize the propellant is different. Ion thrusters use cathodes emitting electrons, but plasma thrusters use high concentrations of microwaves. When it comes to ion thrusters and plasma thrusters, they have some key differences. Ion thrusters are known for their low thrust but high efficiency, making them perfect for those long space missions and station keeping. Plasma thrusters, on the other hand, pack more punch with higher thrust levels and can work both in space and Earth's atmosphere. Ion thrusters are like the precision instruments of space missions, while plasma thrusters are the powerful workhorses with potential applications in aviation. Power-wise, Ion thrusters are the energy-efficient ones. They are ideal for deep space probes where conserving power is essential. Plasma thrusters are power-hungry due to their higher thrust levels. Both types work in space, but plasma thrusters have the cool advantage of functioning in Earth's atmosphere, which could be a game-changer for aviation by reducing reliance on fossil fuels and cutting emissions. But there are challenges too. Ion thrusters need a constant supply of xenon propellant, which can be a headache on long missions. Plasma thrusters have their own set of problems, especially when trying to use them on Earth. See, when those accelerated xenon ions meet our atmosphere, they lose thrust due to air resistance. So, bringing this technology to Earth is a real puzzle, so Professor Tang and his team have built a prototype plasma engine that might just crack this nut. Instead of relying on extreme heat or electric fields, they're using concentrated microwaves to turn air into plasma. A spark heats things up in a quartz tube, creating high-pressure plasma for propulsion. The team got about 11 newtons of thrust from a 400-watt microwave jet prototype engine. What's cool is that about 4 newtons of that thrust came from the compressed air itself. That's roughly 28 newtons per kilowatt, which is pretty promising. Here we can take example of the Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket, or VASIMR, and Electrothermal Thrusters, which are under development for potential use in spacecraft. These energy-hungry systems require 200 kilowatts of electrical power to produce a meager 1.12 pounds of thrust. 
The VASIMR engine is a game-changing innovation in space travel. It uses radio waves to heat propellant gas, turning it into super-hot plasma for propulsion. Magnetic fields control and accelerate the plasma, generating thrust. But using these engines on aircraft is tricky due to the extra weight of power equipment and the risk of extreme heat damage, known as plasma erosion. Researchers in Wuhan are working hard to overcome these challenges, conducting tests with different materials and construction methods. They're using a setup made of quartz and steel that can handle the intense conditions of plasma propulsion testing. However, not everyone is convinced. MIT professor Steve Barrett is critical, and he has suggested that the Chinese researchers' measurements are flawed. Plus, some experts want more information about the engine's performance at higher power levels. When we talk of cutting-edge technology, skepticism is healthy. It ensures thorough testing and safety for real-world applications. As we address these challenges, we'll get a better idea of the potential of plasma propulsion. These advances in plasma engines are also driving innovation in electrifying jet engines. In the past, efforts focused on auxiliary equipment, but now there's a push to electrify the core of the aircraft engine itself, called the More Electric Engine, MEE, initiative. MEE replaces traditional mechanical, hydraulic, or pneumatic systems with electrical propulsion technology to reduce exhaust emissions and combat climate change. However, there are other approaches too. Traditionally, jet engines used to directly power critical components like fuel pumps and hydraulic systems. They also relied on bleed air for these functions, but there's a transformative shift happening in aviation. Now, power-hungry components are being driven by electric motors. This not only eases the burden on the engine, but also promises significant reductions in carbon dioxide emissions. Another step towards greener aviation is the use of sustainable aviation fuels, sometimes called SAF or biofuels. These alternatives combined with enhancements like larger propulsion fans have ability to improve fuel efficiency. However, the real challenge is to reduce or eliminate exhaust gases in the quest for fully electrified aviation. International organizations such as the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, and the International Air Transport Association, IATA, have set ambitious targets to cut carbon emissions in half by 2050 compared to 2005 levels. To achieve these goals, the focus is shifting towards electrifying the engine itself for cleaner and more eco-friendly flights. The aviation world is now looking at electrifying aircraft engines. This electrification not only accommodates the expected surge in aviation demand, but also holds the key to reduce exhaust emissions significantly. There's even talk of replacing traditional jet engines with electric motors and developing plasma engines. To electrify aircraft engines, there are two primary approaches. One is the pure electric system, relying solely on electric motors for propulsion, which could nearly eliminate engine exhaust gases. The other is the hybrid system, which combines traditional jet engines with electric motors, striking a balance between performance and environmental impact. This shift towards electrifying aircraft engines marks a pivotal moment in aviation history, going beyond conventional propulsion systems to prioritize sustainability and efficiency. As researchers and manufacturers invest in electric engines, the aviation industry is determined to make a significant contribution to the global effort to combat climate change. The UK's next-generation fighter jet, the Tempest, is even exploring the possibility of using electricity to power the aircraft, potentially replacing traditional jet fuel. While this is promising for the environment, there are concerns about the readiness of electric propulsion systems by the planned entry into service in 2035. The involvement of Williams Advanced Engineering, who are known for developing high-performance batteries for race cars, have brought valuable insights into battery management and cooling technology, which is crucial for electric or hybrid propulsion systems. The Tempest fighter has sixth-generation capabilities that surpass even advanced fifth-generation aircraft. It features a helmet-enabled virtual cockpit, artificial intelligence integration, and cutting-edge laser weapons that make it a challenging military asset. Electrifying the Tempest fighter aligns with the global commitment to reduce carbon emissions, but the timeline is a challenge. Developing, testing, and deploying electric or hybrid propulsion for a fighter of this caliber is not a small task. 
The complex engineering and rigorous tests make it uncertain if such a system will be fully operational and reliable by 2035. However, the fact that electrification is even considered for a fighter as advanced as the Tempest shows the dynamic and evolving nature of aviation technology. It shows our ongoing push for innovation and efficiency in a time when being eco-friendly is more important. What is your take on it? Let us know in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and watch the next video as well. See you again.